I'm here again today with Bonnie Specker, who is going to provide us with some information related to COVID-19 and what has been happening in our nation, in our state, in our area, and across the world with COVID-19 over the last week. And also today, she's going to talk a little bit about the importance of vaccines, and then also some trending misinformation uh, that has been happening over the last week. So Bonnie, what do you have for us today? Thanks, Chelsea. Yeah, I thought it would be interesting to look at some of the Brookings data to get an idea of what's going you know, on with the vaccines and can we actually see anything in the data. And then I thought it would be kind of nice to add maybe each week during these weekly updates. So one, addressing one of the misinformation things that are out there on social media. So I thought I'd start that this week. As far as importance of vaccines, this is a graph. It's updated once a month. Um, this graph, along with all the other graphs, are included on the City of Brookings website. I don't give those every week because there's over 40 of them, and I don't think people want to listen to that much. But um, I think I thought this one was good, and I usually don't have this here, but it one way of looking at this is these are roughly as close to the beginning of the month as possible. Now the reason I don't do it the first of the month is these data have to be requested specifically from the Department of Health. So once a week I get information from the Department of Health on the number of positive cases by age group within Brookings County. So I take the week that I get that information that's closest to the first of the month. And this can just lets you see what's happening over time within a certain age group. So if we look here at the 20 to 29 year olds, about 4% of them had tested positive back in September. And currently, as of May 5th, there were 15.9%. But you can kind of look at the rate of increase. You know, we have a big jump here early in November, um, well, the end of September. So this is the beginning of September to the beginning of November. We have a large jump and again to the beginning of December. And you can kind of, if you were to draw a line here, it would give you an estimate of the rate of increase. Um, what I thought was interesting is here, out in these older age groups, the last four months, the 80 plus group has been pretty much flat. And in the last three months, the 70 to 79 year age group has been pretty flat. And that's because the vaccines have been out for them that long. You know, it was originally opened up to those older people. So this flattening, that you see in these older age groups is likely due to the high rate of vaccination that we currently have in those groups. Whereas down here, and, and you'll see the data later, these age groups do not have a very high vaccination rate. So the rate, they're still increasing the cases in these age groups. So why is that important? People say, well, these are the high risk people, you know, they're the ones that should be vaccinated um, and we don't need to worry about it so much down here. Other than herd immunity, there is, which is an important reason for everyone to get vaccinated. It, you, people have to remember that if we can increase the vaccination rates in these less than 60 year olds, we will end up decreasing the number of cases and that's going to lead to a decrease in hospitalizations and deaths. Right now, all age groups less than 60 have vaccination rates less than 70%. And just to show the significance of this in the last four weeks, so in the last month, there have been five deaths among South Dakotans who are less than 60 years of age. And just this past week or a couple weeks ago, there was one in the 20 to 29 year age group. And there have actually been eight deaths in that 20 to 29 year age group. So there are bad outcomes that occur in these younger ages. They're not as common as the older ages, but they still occur. So we need to really, um, increase that vaccination rate. Now, as far as misinformation, 
Um, one of the ones that's currently trending is this claim that the COVID-19 vaccine can shed from person to person. And as a result of that, unvaccinated people who are in close proximity to someone who's vaccinated are having changes in their periods or their or miscarriage, so their monthly menstrual cycles. And first, there no, the COVID vaccines do not shed and they're not infectious. This is biologically not possible. Menstrual cycles, there are some women that report fluctuations in menstrual cycles receiving vaccines, that's true, but the reports are anecdotal. Um, there's not been a, a sort of a study using uh, some sort of design that can really get at this question. But there are people that are determining whether these fluctuations in menstrual cycles that might be occurring could be linked to stress or immune reactions. There are, like if you have an, a robust immune response, it can release hormones that could change your menstrual cycle. Um, irregular periods, that's not something that's contagious. If you have an irregular menstrual cycle, you're not gonna give that to someone else. Now, as far as pregnancy, there was an article that just came out this week from the New England Journal of Medicine. It was on 35,000 women who received either the Moderna or the Pfizer vaccine during pregnancy. And the findings from that were that vaccines are safe and they are not related to miscarriages. So that's some of the scientific evidence that goes against that misinformation that's out there. And the CDC also makes it a point to say that pregnant women with, who get COVID during pregnancy, they are at a much greater increase of severe disease compared to non-pregnant women who get COVID. So pregnancy itself can increase the severity if you were to get COVID. So it is important for people to get vaccinated, including women of childbearing age, and it's not gonna be passed, you know, you're not gonna catch anything from people if you're not vaccinated who have been vaccinated. As far as the weekly summary, this is the data as of yesterday. And again, I just wanna remind people, all of the slides, 40 some of them are on this website um, and they're, they're updated every Wednesday. And this is the slide of the number of cases per week for Brookings County. And we are now in moderate spread um, this past week, which is great news. There, we aren't in moderate spread according to, part, to Department of Health dashboard just yet. And that's why this is up here. The Department of Health requires that you are in moderate spread for two weeks. Essentially, they're basing it on a two week period rather than a one week period. So hopefully next week, if we still keep the numbers down, we'll be um, defined as being in substantial spread. And you can see here, we had a, a big decrease in the number of cases this past week. Um, 27 cases the week before, it was 45. So for the last four weeks, we've had a pretty dramatic drop in the number of cases. As far as hospitalizations, this is kind of odd. We, we were dropping and then this past week, we had quite a big jump in, um, people that were hospitalized. I'm not sure what this involved, it, why this could happen. Um, we did, they, they posted, the Department of Health posted yesterday additional variant data, and we do have more variants that have been detected in Brookings County. So um, that might have something to do with this. I think it's way too early to tell. As far as the state, the state is finally in moderate spread too. And that's the first time since last summer. So things, things are looking good in the state. This past week, there were 675 new cases compared to 881 the week before. 
If you look at the hospitalization data, this again is still flat. Last week, I had mentioned um, concern about a high percent of the patients who were hospitalized being in the ICU. And I mentioned that it's normally around 20%, 19, 20%. And last week it was 30%. This week it's around 20%. So it, this may have been just a fluke, um, but this is looking more sort of normal. Um, 102, so the number of people hospitalized is about the same, and then there's been that big drop in the number of in the ICU. As far as hospital admissions, lat this week it was 80, and the week before it was um, 76. So we're up just a tiny, tiny bit. But again, the hospitalizations are running pretty flat. As far as deaths, there have been increases actually in deaths over the last three weeks. Um, this past week, we, there were 12 deaths in South Dakota compared to eight the week before. You can see this is, these are weekly numbers. Um, they seem to be coming back up. As far as the percent of the population that's received at least one vaccine, this is for both Brookings County and the state. And again, these data are requested from the Department of Health. The Brookings, the vaccination data by age grouping is not something that's on the dashboard. But you can see that in all age groups, we have a higher rate of vaccination in Brookings County compared to the state average, except for this um, 20 to 29 year age group where we're if you want to call it underperforming compared to the state. So, you know, we really need to get these vaccination rates up. What, to what level it gives us herd immunity isn't really known. I've heard anything from 70 to 85 percent, depending upon which variant is the most common um, in the population that you're talking about. <clears throat> So overall, 50% of South Dakotans above the age of 20 have been vaccinated and 52% of Brookings County residents older than 20. If you look at those data, don't include the federal IHS or the VA data. And if you look at the VA data, it says on the dashboard that 55% of the state population older than 16 have been vaccinated, including that VA and, and health or Indian Health Service data. <clears throat> as far as the percent of cases that have tested positive, Brookings um, has a lower percent in all age groups than the state. The group age group with the highest is this 20 to 29 year age group. 18.6% of South Dakotans have been tested positive in that age group, compared to close to 16% among Brookings County residents. Now, if you look at the United States, we've also been dropping the last four weeks. Everything this last month has been a downward trend, you know, at the county level, state level, and the federal level in terms of new cases. This past week, there were close to 350,000 compared to close to 400,000 the week before. If you look at deaths, um, they've also dropped a little bit, but holding steady the last two weeks at around 5,000 deaths per week. Um, that's a lot of deaths. If you think about what happened on 9-11, you know, this is one 9-11 more than one 9 a week. So I think people shouldn't forget that, that even though this is down, it's still, I think, unacceptably high for something that can be prevented with vaccines. If you look at the world, this is actually a great sign. I hope it stays this way. This is the first time since February that the number of new cases worldwide has actually shown a decrease. Um, hopefully this is not a fluke and that it will continue to decrease. But we're at, a, at 
5.6, 5.7 um, million new cases per week globally. So we, we still are definitely in a pandemic. As far as deaths, we're at 92 roughly, 1,000 deaths per week, um, more than 10,000 deaths a day worldwide from this virus. So I, I just want to remind people to be socially responsible um, and protect your neighbors. You know, you can do that wearing a mask, washing your hands, socially distancing, avoiding crowds and poorly ventilated spaces, and then getting vaccinated. And I don't think now is the time to forget about these things that we can do to protect our community. So. That's all for the day. Any questions? Well, I just want to say that it's good to see that um, numbers are going down. And like you mentioned, you know, these things that we're doing, it, they just keep helping. So, you know, as long as we keep doing those things, hopefully those numbers will keep going down. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful weekend. So um, people can really enjoy themselves and get outside and get some fresh air. And so I think one thing it's good to remember is that all pandemics will end. Um, it's just how long they last is something that we can influence through our proactive actions, I guess you could call it. So, you know, it will be over someday, but the sooner it's over, the better. And we need to do these things to get, make that time shorter. Well, thank you, Bonnie. Until next week, if anyone has any questions for Bonnie, please email us at the email address listed in the description of this video, and we will get those questions answered for you. And just so you know, there is a link in the description of the video also to those weekly updated slides that Bonnie mentioned at the beginning of this video. So if you want to see more information related to COVID-19, as she mentioned, there's about 40 slides that are updated on the city's website every week, and you can visit them at that link. Thanks, Chelsea. Have a good weekend. You too.